The Internet is Down Productions presents. Hey folks, today we're going to talk about Linux on the bedside computer. And here's where the story begins. Uh, somebody mentioned in the video where I had to swap out all those motherboards and make the APU my main computer and all that stuff, uh, why I didn't use Linux on my uh, main desktop. And that's basically for convenience. Uh, I could probably live without Windows if it weren't for a few select programs not working properly in Linux, iTunes being the main one that I use for music and managing stuff on my uh, iPhone and other stuff. I really need that to work, and every component of it, including the store. And, that, and last time I tried that, it just didn't work at all. Uh, so it's mainly, so having Windows on there is mainly to avoid headaches. Also, Linux doesn't particularly like that APU board to begin with. Uh, you leave Linux running on it and it gets kernel panics after a while. So it's generally it generally doesn't like the chipset or the, or the, the whole setup, really. Uh, seems to be okay on my ThinkPad, uh, the AMD ThinkPad I have, but on the AMD desktop with APU and it doesn't seem to be okay with that. But that got me thinking, uh, that guy saying saying to me, why don't I use Linux? That got me thinking about Linux again, considering I'm taking the Linux Plus exam at some point sometime soon. And um, that got me thinking about the bedside computer. And I'm thinking, all I ever do with this thing is watch YouTube videos, watch TV shows that are stored locally, go on Second Life, hang out with friends, play board games, goof off, and, you know, chat on Skype. And that's all I ever do with this machine. Why the hell do I need Windows to do that? I really don't. So... Since the system has been swapped out for for basically all Intel stuff, uh, I figured uh, Linux would be perfect on here. Because I've run Linux on this motherboard before, and it works perfectly. It's an H61 motherboard, which Linux supports perfectly. And the Core i3-2105, Linux won't skip a beat, ever. So, I put Linux on here. Linux Mint 17, Cinnamon. And uh, it runs great. The only snag I ran into is that Intel graphics doesn't run as well on Linux in the 3D modes. On 2D it's fine, but when you start pushing 3D like I do with Second Life, um, it's, it's really laggy compared to Windows, which is a shame. So what I did is I found a GT, an NVIDIA GT240 that I just had in my closet. It was a refurb card. Uh, I thought it was an EVGA card, but it's actually a reference card, it looks like. Uh, a one gigabyte model of the reference GT240. So I stuck that in the uh, I stuck that in this machine. That cleared those graphics problems right up, while at the same time not using much power. So there you go. Nvidia and Intel seem to be the way to go on Linux. Nvidia graphics with an Intel chipset and Intel CPU run Linux the best in my experience, and that's why I chose to to run it on this machine. And it runs beautifully. In fact, I'll turn it on right now. One thing I had to do was, uh, sometimes I like to watch old Flash animations just for nostalgia, because, you know, my nostalgia is better than your logic. <laughs> and, uh, I had to figure out how to make, uh, Linux play .swf files, um, in the web browser, because out of the box, Linux Mint 17 didn't. I don't know if that's the case with most other distros, but it seems like the issue is around somewhere. And it seems to affect desktop environments on Linux that are affected by, uh, or that rely on free desktop. Because I was able to edit a free desktop file and that just fixed the whole thing. And there we have it. Here is the, uh, here's Linux on the bedside computer. As you can see, it booted up lickety split. And I really like that. That's a big aspect of the bedside computer I really like. I've got Firefox, Skype, and Firestorm. All installed on here. Firestorm is the Second Life uh, client I use because it's it's just better than the uh, official one. I have it all black so that it's easy on the eyes. Um, so let me go into sysinfo. I had to install this program by the way just so you could see what's in the system. Um, Linksman 17. Uh, here's all the details. 64-bit Linux has the Core i3-2105 uh, CPU in it. Uh, this CPU has been a workhorse for me over the past 
three years or so. Uh, it's been a really good CPU. I like it a lot. <clears throat> has 8 gigs of RAM in it, which is 1333 Kingston memory, if I remember right. has the one terabyte hard drive. And I have to go to NVIDIA settings to uh, show you the GPU. It's a GeForce GT240. 96 CUDA quarters, a gig RAM, 128-bit memory interface. It, it was a budget card at the time. I had a GT240 in my main computer about uh, four years ago, and it was an excellent card. Card runs nice and cold, too. It, on lo at load, it's like 60 degrees C. I idling here, it's like 37. It's a very cool running card, which is fantastic. Of course, this is the monitor I have. It's the Acer X193W, so it sees that. And I've been getting along really well with Linux on the... Uh, bedside computer. It's been fantastic on this machine. Uh, using Firefox with it and it hasn't skipped a beat. It's been great. Uh, I haven't had one ounce of trouble out of it so far. I'll probably continue to use Linux on my bedside computer unless there are problems with Flash down the road. Uh, which I know most can be remedied by just using Chrome because Chrome has Pepper Flash built into it. Uh, but Firefox still relies on the old Fla uh, Flash 11.2 that, that still gets security updates, but it hasn't updated at all on Linux because Adobe decided to abandon it for some stupid reason. But there you go. That is Linux on the bedside computer. Uh, now that it's an Intel and NVIDIA sort of setup, it works perfectly on this computer. Uh, the only thing I miss from Windows is loudness equalization uh, with the sound. And what loudness equalization is, it's, it's a feature built into um, Windows and into some sound card drivers that lets you basically enable dynamic range compression on your audio. So let's say you're watching a bunch of YouTube videos that are a different volume. It will make all of them a consistent volume uh, for you. And I, I really did like that on my bedside computer. I absolutely hate that for music because it just ruins the dynamic range. But when you're just watching videos on out of a little USB speaker like this, it's kind of useful, but that's the one thing I'll miss about Linux. In Linux, you have to use, uh, I think there are ways of doing it system-wide, but it's really complicated and cumbersome. I don't want to bother with it. Uh, and some applications do have it built in, like VLC has a built-in compressor that I can use for watching videos and movies and stuff. So, luckily, the keyboard has volume controls on it, so it shouldn't be a big deal. But yeah, that's Linux on the bedside computer. I've been pretty pleased with it on here so far. Uh, I've wanted Linux on a, my bedside computer for years now, but uh, I kind of abandoned the idea once I figured out that that APU system would just never agree with it. Uh, so now that I have an Intel set up again for this bedside computer, it works perfectly. Uh, I've been very happy with it so far. Uh, so there you have it. I thought I'd uh, update the bedside computer a little bit and just show you what I've been doing. Uh, oh, there you go. Linux. Yay, Linux. Have a good one, everybody. Ciao.